Fantastic. Good. Okay. Um, good afternoon. So I'm I'm Stephen Dye. I'm the assistant head teacher responsible for curriculum, and welcome to the first um, year twelve and thirteen parents curriculum forum. Um, I'm delivering the, the curriculum forum because it has just that a focus on curriculum. I've delivered one already to years um, the main school the main school, and I'm now delivering one to the sixth form students' parents. And the thinking behind the curriculum forum was to try to increase engagement with um, parents and curriculum um, and to, to act as a, a sort of better link in and between parents and, and staff and to try to make clear some of the developments in curriculum which has become um, more and more important in education and recognised as being more important in edu education. So the plan is that um, I've already taken some questions from parents, I've tried to answer some of those questions or I will try to in this forum and I've also tried to answer them by speaking to Miss Hockley who's our head of sixth form um, and I've put those together in a document at the end of the PowerPoint I'll use. That will be sent out to everyone that participates in the forum. Additionally, the forum um, and the video from the forum will all be uploaded onto our YouTube page for those parents to, to watch should they choose to if they're unable to attend. So um, I'm going to talk briefly, I'm just going to start sharing my screen. I'm going to talk briefly about why we have why we're having a forum relating to curriculum and, and how curriculum has become um, so important in education first of all um, i'll move on to talk a little bit about what Wyndham college's curriculum looks like for our sixth form students and what we offer um, and i'll also talk a bit about where you can find information relating to the curriculum should you wish to um, and hopefully that should answer most of the questions that came up um, previously so let me just share my screen with you Good. So you should be able to see the um, the heading parents curriculum forum um, on on the screen now. That should be what's visible. Can you just confirm that's what you can you can see on there that that's working properly? Does it say parents curriculum forum on your screens? Just like to make sure that you're seeing what I think you're you're seeing. Just a hand up to say that you can you can see parents curriculum forum on your screen. Fantastic. Let me get started then. Um, so really what happened was recently I've taken over responsibility for um, curriculum as an um, assistant head teacher in September. And over the summer, there's been a whole raft of um, changes in terms of the focus on curriculum and also all sorts of um, speeches made relating to curriculum by different individuals, um, one of which is by Amanda Spielman, who is Ofsted's Chief Inspector, and she's talked about the importance of a rich and stimulating curriculum and the need to broaden minds in a speech that she gave um, in summer 2021, and Nick Gibb kind of reinforced the message about the need for a broad, rich and knowledge-based curriculum. On top of that, the Education Endowment Foundation released a lot of research suggesting that parental involvement was crucial for students' development. And really over lockdown um, and during COVID, what struck me as a parent um, of two children who are not six form age, um, they were six and four, um, was that we had to do some homeschooling. And in doing homeschooling, it made us much more conscious and much more aware of the school curriculum than we'd ever been previously. We understood about phonics and numeracy and subitizing numbers in a way that we, we just hadn't previously. Um, and that made me recognise that that level of parental engagement and involvement with the curriculum was especially helpful to developing our children's understanding and education um, and could be really transferred to what we do um, at school, with our main school and with our sixth form as well. So as a result of these speeches, my experience um, <clears throat> as, a, as a parent, but also a huge number of books that have been written on curriculum in just the last 12 to 18 months, it has become a big, big focus. Um, looking at rather than how we deliver what we teach, why we deliver what we teach, why we're choosing the content that we are choosing to study, um, in, in our subjects. Now, because this is a sixth form curriculum forum, there's a lot less scope um, for, for choosing the content because ultimately we're working towards an academic qualification, an A-level, um, and there's less scope for being able to choose what we teach. Whereas in main school, um, we can determine really 
what our curriculum looks like and what the content looks like, less so at A-level. However, there is scope still to extend and to learn beyond the constraints of the curriculum. And what we're really proud of at Wyndham College and what we really try to do at Wyndham College is not just teach to the exam, but to give students a really good first taste often of new subjects. And at A-level, that's especially relevant because a lot of our students are studying something for the first time. They might be studying a, a subject they never did at GCSE. And our job really with our curriculum, one of the main purpose of the curriculum is to provide our students, our young people, with a taste of that subject. And sometimes they don't like it. They don't like what they taste immediately um, and they're put off by it. Sometimes they get a fl the flavour for it instantly. And the best way I can really demonstrate that is with this very short video. Um, this is a video should hopefully work and we should be able to hear it. It was just being quite slow earlier. Um, this is a video from Sachi and Sachi. If it doesn't work, I can explain it anyway, um, of a number of preschool children um, or early years children tasting different things for the first time in their lives. And what you'll notice as you watch it is that the reactions are quite interesting. Some of them um, love what they taste and are really keen to have more and some clearly are not enjoying what they taste but the most interesting point really is when the face changes from something that at first taste um, isn't very enjoyable and subsequently the student or the young person finds it um, quite enlightening and their eyes widen and that's what we're aiming for really with our, our A-level curriculum to give those students those first tastes and those opportunities to taste something new It's the next one I think in particular that is, it's this one here that's I think particularly telling. The face, I'm not enjoying the first taste at all, and then suddenly the, the eyes open and it becomes very, very clear that actually this is something that she's never tasted before, an experience she's not had before, and the eyes widen. I'm going to leave it with that image. So what we're attempting to do at Wyndham College is to get that sort of response to lots of these subjects that our sixth formers won't previously have experienced. That's the intention, that's the hope. Let me just move the, the slide on. So the way that we do that is not just to teach the specification. We really want our, our parents to be engaged with the specifications. We want them to understand what is required for our students to get the best grades possible at, um, at A level and potentially therefore to go on to their next steps, whether that be universities or apprenticeships. That's a crucial part of our curriculum. But as you can see here, the Wyndham College curriculum, our intention from year seven all the way through until year 13 is to give our students the best of what has been thought, said, written, calculated, and even performed as well. We want our students to achieve success. We want them to get the best A-level grades they possibly can, but we also want them to, 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 to change completely and to, to, to be engaged and enthused by knowledge, the riches of knowledge, lots of different subject disciplines, not not for their A-level experience to be, to be one where they're studying subjects completely in silos and narrow focus on just exam skills, but to be passionate um, about subjects more broadly. And we believe that our curriculum should therefore be accessible to all of our students and it should equip them for life beyond the college. So what we try to do and what we encourage our teachers to do is to teach the core, 
And the core knowledge is the knowledge that is required for success in the examination. And we encourage our teachers to deliver that. And there will always be a focus on ensuring that that happens. But what I'd like to make you as parents aware of is that a term that we're beginning to use and students might be beginning to use as well, which is hinterland knowledge. And the hinterland is, is the context, it's the periphery, it's the, it's the information and the, the knowledge that is gleaned that surrounds the core and puts it into perspective. And we are very, very keen as a college to provide extensive hinterland knowledge to our students so that when they go to university, they are prepared in the subject that they are studying, rather than just being prepared with a certain, to taught to a certain exam grade um, through an exams factory. And we're very, very keen to broaden that hinterland. And the way that we can do, do it is through exchanges in the classroom with teachers who are expert and professional in their craft. And we're very, very fortunate in the college that we have all of our lessons taught by, by specialists, but also beyond the classroom um, with the offer that we give beyond normal lessons on the students' timetables. Um, and I will talk about that in a little bit. So what I want you to understand really is that the Wyndham College curriculum far extends the three A-levels that you're child might be studying. We, we go far, far beyond that, and that should become clear, hopefully, as we work through the remaining slides. So you can see here, this is a document that actually is, is shared really with staff, but I thought it was really important to share it beyond teaching staff and to make you as parents aware of what we are trying to achieve as a college. We are trying to, to develop a balanced curriculum. That's one of our overarching principles, a balanced curriculum that builds something called cultural capital. Some of you might be familiar with that phrase and maybe in a different context, but essentially what we're talking about here is, is knowledge and understanding the world that will empower our students to make those next steps. Not necessarily the knowledge that will secure them an exam grade, but rather knowledge that is going to, to give them opportunities moving forward. So that might be um, knowledge relating to the arts or theatre, it might relate to music and classical music, it sometimes is where students will have opportunities to go on, on, um, on trips and museums. That's all cultural capital. And some students have access to huge amounts of it at home and other students less so. The aim of the college is to try to close that gap to ensure that all students have their cultural capital built in this way. We want it rigorous and coherent and we want it vertically integrated. We've actually tried to design a curriculum that builds from year seven all the way through to year 13 so that when the students in year seven are learning things in history, they will be relevant all the way through to their learning in year 13. And it needs to be appropriate, focused and relevant as well for, folk, for preparing our students for their next steps. So in terms of our overview, we try to make sure it's as broad and it's as balanced as it can possibly be. At A-level, that's difficult insofar as there are three A-level choices taken. Um, but we encourage our teachers to make sure that our students are independent learners and we try to celebrate successes as much as we possibly can. What we then do is try to give further opportunities to our students, in, whether that be in sport, in music, um, in, in public speaking, we try to give opportunities. And I think we as a college do that um, as well as any other school. We want students to leave year 13 well-rounded, happy, educated, and really ready to take on the world. And you can only achieve that through developing the cultural capital and the character of the student, rather than just delivering an exam result. In terms of the logistics and how this works, our year 12 students get 11 hours a fortnight of taught time per subject and down to 10 hours a fortnight in year 13 as they become additionally independent. Alongside that, that, that simplifies the curriculum. That's what you're familiar with. That's what you as parents probably see on their timetable. Um, and that's what you'll know happens day to day. They get 11 hours a fortnight per subject. But it's, the curriculum is more than that, certainly. If you want to find, and there were questions about this, if you want to find out specifically what is covered in subjects, the order it's been covered in, why it's been delivered in that way, we have curriculum guides. Um, I've included a link here, and this PowerPoint will be emailed out to you. But it's as simple as going to the website, Wyndham College website, going to sixth form, selecting sixth form and selecting subjects. And if you do that, you will find course overviews under the curriculum guide. And they show you the, we call it the intent, the implementation and the impact of the curriculum for every single subject we teach at A-level. And what you've got there is a very detailed rationale and explanation of the decisions that have been made in the way that the curriculum is delivered. 
So you can access that and you can read that. I'm not going to go through and I can't possibly go through that for each of our subjects. Um, but if that's something that you are interested to find out more about in order to support um, your, your son or daughter, then please feel free to take the time to do that on our website. I mentioned a moment ago the desire for us to develop character. Character education has become a, a large focus um, of all educational institutions. We're a member of the Association of Character Education and we're about to embark on getting the, the kite mark for character education. We believe very, very firmly and we've prided ourselves for many years on student leadership um, being important for our community and allowing our students to take some leadership within our community. To that end, we have societies and the societies, very much a university model, um, allow students to express themselves or to participate or, as I showed you previously, to get that first taste, not necessarily in the subject, but maybe in drama or jazz band or law or medicine or choir or history or Amnesty International or a certain sport or debating, all of those clubs that are listed on that slide. So there's an opportunity for a first taste and it's low stakes. They can take that first taste without the stakes being too high. They can drop the society easily and they can do something else should they wish to. Um, we have a JCR, a junior common room, which is a group of students that help to develop um, the sixth form and that host social and charity events. There are opportunities to get a taste of being involved in a charity or of running um, as, a tre as a treasurer. There are opportunities for all of these, um, these areas. We also have a head teachers council that um, we have hustings with an election um, for the sixth form students working very closely with the head teacher and the CEO as ambassadors of the college across numerous events um, and leading and running charity events as well um, and trying to trying to lead the college to, to make positive changes for the students. All of this intends is to, do, to develop the students character as leaders and to develop their leadership. That in itself isn't sufficient because it doesn't necessarily hit all of our students. Not all of our students are involved in all of those things. I think if we take the societies, the JCR, the Head Teachers Council, we're actually getting to a point where a lot of our students have been involved in all of those things. If you add into that the CCF and the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, then we're, we're really building um, an offer that means that we can develop the character of our students. But there's one other thing that we felt was, was missing and we wanted to develop and formalise. So we developed um, something called Floriat. Obviously using Floriat Sapientia, which is let wisdom flourish, which is um, our slogan. And we, we said um, that we wanted to have some sort of lectures and tutorial system, again, to prepare our students for university life, which is the, des the direction that most of our students take at sixth form. These are fortnightly and they cover lots of different topics, as you can see on the slide. And we have had all sorts of internal and external speakers talking about all sorts of experiences. This doesn't contribute to a final grade. This is an attempt to build students' cultural capital, to build students' character, um, and to give them opportunities that they otherwise would not have within their own subjects. They have a, in year 13, they have a fortnightly lecture, um, and that changes as the, as the year goes, goes by. There's a programme for Floriat, which has been con carefully considered, looking at different strands, and you can see there um, on the left-hand side, the different strands, identity and curiosity, courage, leadership, diversity, current affairs, resilience, and then there are masterclasses, both academic and cultural, and there's a section on perception. And this allows us to build character, it allows us to connect subjects together, and it allows us to build cultural capital. And I think this is the bit that maybe lots of parents are unaware of. The assumption is students do three A-level subjects, 11 hours for each in year 12, 10 hours for each in year 10, and that's it hopefully you're becoming aware that there's a lot more to our curriculum at Wyndham College than maybe meets the eye. Not only do we not just teach the exam because we apply that hinterland knowledge that I mentioned earlier, but we also have this whole character offer and it's that I think that makes Wyndham College so special. One step beyond that, and this still refers to and relates to the curriculum at the college, we've got a, a speakers program. Some of these things have have not taken off in the same way in the last couple of years as a result of COVID. However, the, the programmes are still running and we still intend to run them. In the past, at our speakers programme, we've had David Dean, who is the vice chair of the Football Association and a member of UEFA and FIFA um, associations as well. Um, we've had Andy, Andy Barrett, who is a chairman um, at Ford. 
um, of Britain. We also hold two annual lectures, the Peel Lecture and the Lincoln Lecture, where we've had, as you can see on the slide, um, some, some really influential and important speakers um, who've been able to talk directly to our students. And in the past, we've had Argentinian and Spanish exchanges, we've had ski trips and we continue to have ski trips, and we offer the Duke of Edinburgh um, Award um, and, and one of the leading schools in offering that alongside work experience opportunities, mentoring programmes and UCAS experiences. All of this is designed with the same aim to ensure that our curriculum extends that learning beyond the classroom, that we hit that cultural capital, that we hit that hinterland knowledge and that we are preparing our students for the next step. That gives you a taste and a flavour of our curriculum, which was my intention from this session. What I've also done is I've put together a document, as you can see on the screen, um, with questions and answers. And on it are some of the questions that were asked, or all of the questions that were asked when I contacted you all about the possibility for a curriculum forum. And I've spoken to Miss Hockley, who has provided answers to those questions um, because she seemed the most appropriate person to respond to them. So there were questions about um, sleep and phones, for instance, and I just wanted to reassure parents about the, 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 those issues and how we tackle those. There were questions about the amount of time allocated to catch up and to check those students that are struggling, and I've given a response to that. Um, there were questions about A-level booklets and the structure of the courses. Most of the questions that relate to curriculum can be answered if you go onto the website and you have a look at the curriculum guides that I mentioned previously. There are a couple of questions about the um, exams and mocks, um, which have been answered hopefully there for you as well. UCAS and applications for university, which I've tried to answer there for you as well. Um, and there were some questions about the plans for A-level, which I can't answer at the moment, I'm afraid, but hopefully soon we will be able to. Face-to-face um, -face parents evenings, um, and the fact that we've just answered that saying that we are maintaining using school cloud which is which has been really well received and, and just a, a question also relating to some of the a-level subjects that we offer um, and, and why we maybe do or don't offer certain subjects so i've tried to answer your questions specifically at the end more generically throughout the presentation the key for me is that i hope all of you um, either attending now or watching after the live presentation have a better understanding of what the Wyndham College curriculum stands for, what our main principles are, the offer that the, the, the students get at the school um, and, and how we manage to achieve that. And I hope it gives you maybe the, uh, the understanding of the curriculum to be able to support your son or your daughter more effectively um, to ensure that they have the best chance of success at the college because that's what